Alright, so on this video we're going to go ahead and take a look at setting up a Vizix uh, MVD series, one of the miniature Vandal Domes or micro Vandal Domes. Uh, so let's go ahead and come down here under your start menu. Go ahead and come up to your program files and then of course your IP utilities. Again, we see all of these uh, wonderful you know, various manufacturers that we have preloaded, but we're going to want to use the Vizix IP setup utility. I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, detect online devices. Now this is one that I've just pulled out of the box and have just uh, plugged directly in. So I'm going to come up here and uh, click on that guy. This is the default for all of these. If you had multiples of these, you would see a whole bunch of .64s in here, but essentially this is the one that we've just uh, just programmed in. So what I'm going to do is come down here under change IP address. Now I want to be able to modify this for my network, so obviously I'm going to change uh, some of these other guys in here. So we'll change this to 1, and I'll just leave the end at 64. That way I can identify it easily. So I'll come down here and make sure that you hit save IP address. You want to make sure that you save whatever changes that you do to the camera. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to hit next. I'm going to do show advanced options. And notice you'll, the IP address is still that same camera we were just working on. So I'll go ahead and hit connect. It's going to log into this particular camera here. And uh, the next thing we'll typically want to do is we're going to want to do a force certified firmware update. Okay. What that's going to do is that's going to push out a, uh, a certified version of firmware to the camera that we know is compatible with our software. That's certainly a, a big plus on this guy. So we'll go ahead and hit automatic update on this. And then this will take a few minutes to go ahead and upload to the camera. So bear with us while this uploads. Okay, so that's gone ahead and done that. So uh, obviously, since we've uh, done a uh, certified firmware update to this particular camera, uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is that if you try to connect to this guy, it's going to tell you that it's failed to log in. That's because we've just done a, uh, a firmware update, and that camera actually needs to reboot. So give it a couple of minutes. Uh, this guy will go ahead and actually probably 30 seconds to a minute, but let the camera reboot. Uh, if at any point in time you want to check it again, just come up here and hit connect. Uh, just give it a few seconds, and it will log back in once the camera reboots. All right, so we've gone ahead and uh, had that camera come back up after the reboot. Uh, so you'll see down here now it says uh, no firmware needs to be updated, uh, but it does tell us settings are not correct. That's, of course, it's uh, right out of the box. We haven't made any setting changes to it, but we are connected to that camera, so we'll come over here and make uh, whatever changes we need to. Of course, we've got our resolution. Uh, we've also got our audio that we can either turn on or turn off. Uh, that, of course, is the microphone input on the camera. Uh, these little MVD jobbies uh, typically don't have the standard um, microphone inputs, but uh, if you do want that, that, of course, is an option for us. Uh, frames per second, whatever frames per second you want to run this guy at. You've also got the ability of doing some uh, you know, time lapse stuff, 1 16th of a frame a second. That of course will give you one frame every 16 second, or you can crank them all the way up to 22 frames a second. Uh, your iframe interval, typically you will want this down at about one, one second. Uh, that'll save a little bit of your memory buffer. You've also got the ability to tweak your bit rate coming from the camera as well if you want to limit the bandwidth from it, but uh, if I'm doing 22 frames a second, we'll obviously want this guy up at 2048 or possibly even higher than that. At 3072. Uh, the predefined stuff, of course, is uh, just a couple of defaults or some full resolution settings. That, of course, is going to give us uh, everything we possibly can from the camera. Frames per second full, in this case, would be 22 frames a second, maximum bit rate, so on and so forth. Uh, you've got all of your substream settings down below. You can do quarter sif if you want little tiny images, but typically 352 by 240 is sufficient for slower networks for secondary stream. And, of course, you've got your bit rate and your predefined settings as well. Uh, up here at the top, one other button will uh, show up if you're familiar with some of the full-size physics cameras this is uh, the CCD settings button so we'll go ahead and jump into this guy uh, this is where you can actually tweak your white balance if you wanted to of course you can turn it off uh, small scope or large scope or you can leave it set to manual uh, entirely up to you the, the best thing I can tell you about this if you want to come down here and start playing around with some of your uh, gain settings and whatnot just play with them every single light condition is going to be different this is going to be something that you're going to want to play with and just see uh, what exactly uh, you know what works best in your particular scenario uh, uh, exposure time, of course, this is going to be uh, what will determine uh, how much light you've got in the area. Uh, longer exposure time, of course, for lower light situations. Shorter exposure time for possibly fast moving or uh, or brighter situations. Uh, iris mode, of course, uh, manual or auto. Uh, typically, if you are running an auto iris, uh, what this is going to do is this is just going to tweak it from an electronic standpoint. Uh, these cameras don't have a physical aperture that gets uh, manually controlled. But needless to say, if you're set to manual, the exposure time up here is going to work. 
work if you're set over to auto uh, it's going to make these calculations for you now, i would suggest auto for uh, brightly lit possible indoor environments uh, day night mode of course you've got your auto settings that's usually best to kick this guy over to but uh, if for some reason you want to run the camera in black and white all the time set it to night or if you want it to stay color all the time set it for day uh, you do want to change your power line power line frequency uh, if you are in the united states here uh, 60 hertz is what we use here that's certainly what you're going to want uh, from that point go ahead and hit save out of here this of course will save it uh, to the camera itself uh, then once you've got it saved you can hit exit and then of course you want to come back here and you want to make sure that you hit save settings off of this guy as well so that it saves all of your channel stream settings as well uh, that should be it the next step of course is to program it into your vigil server software uh, we'll show you that in another video